guys, it's Peter with LostAngler.com. Today we're going to be tying the bend back fly. It's a pattern originally uh, yeah. invented by a guy named Chico Fernandez. He did it in Florida during the 50s or 60s for a snook in the Everglades. So here it is right here. It's a smaller version that's good for bass. You can tie it all the way up for snook or tarpon or pike or whatever you might want to. So stick around, we're going to get this tied up. Okay guys, today we're going to be tying the bend back fly. It's a pattern and a style of flies that's pioneered by a gentleman by the name of Chico Fernandez. And we're going to start with ordinary hook. Any size with a fairly long shank like this right here is just fine. Like if you have something like maybe along the lines of a ordinary saltwater hook with a shorter shank like this, it just won't do. So look for a little bit longer shank. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is going to put in the vise, then I'm going to take the pliers, and I'm going to bend up just slightly. Doesn't have to be a whole heap, just a little. You don't need to bend that much of the hook either, simply due to the fact that you don't need much room to stack all the materials on right here. Once that's done, we're going to take the fly and flip it over. But we're not going to tie it like that, so it won't quite work. What we're going to do is put it so that this is now a level portion. Doesn't have to be perfectly level, just fairly level. Now getting it set in the vise with it being bent like this is a bit of a challenge, but once you got it, you're off to the races. Okay, so now our hook's bent. Not so much that you'll end up losing fish or anything like that, but it is bent just slightly. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do a full thread wrap. I know that may sound odd considering we're only tying on this portion from here to here, but we're going to do a full thread wrap and I'll show you why. Now, anytime you tie a bend back, you don't really have to mess with the bottom of the hook right here. All you need to worry about is the part you bent. But we're going to go ahead and mess with this part down here. And the reason we're going to do it is I found out that by making a couple changes I can get more action out of the fly and cover a wider range of uh, water areas. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some Mirage Flashaboo. I'm going to take a few strands, not many, just say three or four. Alright, once that's done, I'm going to take it and tie it on to the fly. Just like so. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'm going to tie off those little random little ends. Alright, now I'm going to come back down to where I started my thread at. And I'm going to tie in some lead wire. Not a lot, just a little. We're going to take it, bring it up put in the trap up here All right, and then just twist it around you don't want to use your scissors, it's not good on them so once I've got it twisted off you got to give it a little love there it goes, it pops right on off alright now then I want it to be about this much so I'm going to tie it on snug it down at the start and bring it up some, now I don't want this thing to be super heavy so I'm going to do nice, wide wraps. Just enough to kind of move it on down the water column. Alright, once I've got it to right there, come back with the thread. Now I get off like so. Alright, and then, once again, just twist off. Saves your scissors. Okay, now then, we're going to take this uh, flash of boo and we're going to wrap it around the hook. It's going to kind of hide that uh, hide that lead wire for us. So. Just go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down.
Boop. And if you do, it does slip out of your fingers any. Or little unravel. Just like that. But just get it up. Pull it tight, it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. Alright. And boom. I'm gonna take it. Nail this down. And get off the excess. Alright, now that's done, we're gonna start the rest of the fly. Now, there's several options on how you can tie it after this, it's up to you. I personally am gonna tie it about like I would a deceiver. Except it's a little different. I'm gonna start with some tan craft fur. Trim it off. I like to cut mine close down to the base. Like so. Alright. Once I got my clump of craft fur, what I want to do then is pull out the guard hairs. Pull it right on out. I pull it to about here and I can pull out the rest. And boom. There we are. Now I'm going to take it. I'm going to set it on the hook. Measure the length that I want. About right there is fine. See how it extends nicely beyond the point of the hook? There we go. Got that nailed down. Trim off the excess. Just like so. Now if you fish weedy waters, the uh, bend back is a great pattern for that. Helps you to use a pattern with a lot of action. Easy to throw. Easy to tie. And you can improvise almost anything to the bend back. Nice tridations on it. This is going to be in sort of a brimish pattern. Brim, perch, whatever it may be. Alright, and so you get a rough idea of the size of the fly. Now that that's done, I'm going to add the same sort of uh, flashaboo, that Mirage flash. And I'm um, tie on some more. Just three or four strands again. Pick it up. Double it over. And knock it down. And there we are. I'm just going to let that lay back. Not a big rush on it. I can trim it away later. The next thing I'm going to do is the wing. Alright. I got my wing. I'm going to go with chartreuse. I've already matched up two of them for size. And I'll put them on the left side first. Some nice loose thread wraps. To save you. Up and down, up and down. And keep everything in line. And my wing won't twist. So there we go. It stayed nice and flat. Now I'll take it down. Once that's done, I'll pick up, trim off the excess. And we're going to repeat the step on the other side. Got my feathers. I'll bring them up. Like so. Loose thread wraps. Once that's on there, tack it down nice and tight. And trim off the excess. The reason I go with chartreuse is if I'm fishing in an area that has a lot of bluegill, chartreuse is really good for being more visible. And, uh, the muddy waters that they seem to find themselves in and depending on their diet they'll have a bit of chartreuse on the tips of their tails interesting little tidbit so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spin around the body or the wing that was my daughter Lily and she says hello okay now then, got 
this, check out the length, I only want it to be about this long, and your do here is about that. So, just go ahead, trim off your excess, going to make it easier to handle. Alright, that I've got it on there, I kind of, see how I'm kind of working it slowly down, that helps it to go all the way around, be a little more encompassing. The trick after that is once you got it on there with some loose wraps, kind of spin it around by hand a little. And you can add more here and there where it's needed. That's fine. That's just fine. Okay. And I'm gonna pick up, trim off my excess. Now these bend back patterns were originally intended for salt water, for redfish and snook, but I'd say anywhere you need a weedless fly and you're needing a streamer, I'd say it works just fine. I know it works brilliantly for bass and chain pickerel. I don't see why I wouldn't do just fine for pike. Peacock bass and everything else that swims. Okay. Now we're going to come around to the bottom of the fly. And you can see where it kind of got a little more sparse on this side than it was on the other. That's just fine. That just means we need to add a little more bucktail to that side. And that's part of it. It's not going to be completely even the first time you spin that hair around there unless you spin a redonkulous amount and which is an option but I normally don't I've learned that the more hair I have to spin around the first time the more likely they are to slip out of the strands alright now wrap around I'll spin it some, spread it out. Share that love across the fly. Alright. Now we got that on it. Make sure it looks even. Oop. I always want to make sure it's even top to bottom. So you can loosen up a few thread wraps. You can adjust your deer here just by pulling a little bit more forward in. There we go. Not a problem. Pull it down nice and tight. And we're going to trim off our excess. Just like so. Now if you're worried about the head of your fly getting a little clustered, that's fine. That's fine. I'm sure what I'm doing a little bit better. There we go. That's just fine. Alright. Now that we've done that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the throat. Most bluegill and perch have orange throat. Members of the Bimber family. So we're going to trim off a little bit of red deer here. I mean orange, excuse me, I apologize. Orange deer here. Yeah, that's a little. Tie in the throat. But anyway, like I said, if you're worried about the head of your fly getting a little bit thick, that's not a problem. We're going to uh, put some eyes on it. And this is going to make a good anchor point. Alright, bring it back over, straighten everybody out, you're going to get a little bit of twist in there, okay, now, I'm going to go ahead, add the final touches, at this point you can add any other color you want for the top, I'm just going to add a little bit more olive, just to tidy things up pretty quick, throw some peacock curls and get ready to add the eyes. You can use all manner of synthetics if you want to. That's fine. Be creative with it. Just like so. Bring it around. Even it out. And boom.
Okay. Last part, it's gonna be just a little bit. Peacock curl. Just three or four strands is fine. Right up on top. Like so. Trim off the excess like I just did. Tidy up the head. And then I'm going to tie it off. So you see this one's done in the style of a deceiver. And the material to fly hides the hook. Trim my glass on. Huh? Once again, you want to kind of trim it at uneven lengths. Across the back, like so. Boom. There we are. Trim down, ready to go. Now all we're going to do next is tie it off. All right. Now some folks might use a wet finish. I'm going to use two double half hitches. Use whatever you want to. Doesn't matter. believe it makes any real difference. It's the clues and epoxies that hold it all together anyway. Alright. Trim off my tag again. Alright, now we're going to get ready to do the eyes. Okay guys, thanks for watching. All you gotta do is go check out Tying Lefty's Deceiver with a twist and it'll show you how we did the eyes. All we did was epoxy it on and then go and clear coat over. So it's not a big deal, it's easy to do. And right now, if you want to, you can pick up Lost Angler t-shirts. We made them on the fly. So, there's only a few left. We did them all on our forums here locally and we sold a good many of them, but we got a few left. Here's the front and here's the back and it is guaranteed to make you a better fly fisherman. I'm not going to say where your money back. T-shirt can't fix everything. But no. Thanks for watching. Go to our eBay store. We really appreciate if you bought the uh, T-shirt and if you can send us some feedback on it. Really appreciate it. Thanks guys for watching.